the reason I start with talking about this is because if you've been listening and you've been listening to our podcast, the podcast I did with Knowles, Another Kingdom, this fantasy suspense story that we've been doing is an iTunes uh, series. And it's come down to the last, we're up to number 11. There are 13 episodes altogether, so there are two more episodes. And it's been getting these great reviews and everything. And I said, you know, if you help out, we can start to pitch this in Hollywood because they'll see it's popular and they'll come to me. And a couple of people have come to me. I still have a couple of pitches to do ahead of time. But the big pitch that I did was to somebody I like very much. And I didn't want to bring up their name, but now I have to. Because on Sunday night, the the, Glo- the Golden Globe Awards were on, right? And the, and the Handmaid's Tale won two Golden Globe Awards. And this is the company that I was pitching to. This is Warren Littlefield's company. He's a really nice guy, very brilliant guy. Uh, his, the woman who works for him is one of the best story people I've ever met. She's just terrific. I went in and pitched. As I told you when I did it, I walked in the room. They started dissing Donald Trump the minute I walked into the room. I, I was able to sort of weave through the, you know, tiptoe through the tulips. But, you know, I'm always very honest. And I always tell people, I said to them, you know, I am a completely politically incorrect person. I don't believe in feminism. This is not, this story is kind of an anti-feminist story. You know, I knew I was taking a, a big risk. But now they have come forward and announced after the Golden Globes, the entire cast of the show, the, um, uh, the Handmaid's Tale came out and announced that they are part of the resistance against Donald Trump. And they say there are a lot of times, and Warren says there are a lot of times we wish we were not as relevant as we are. We went into development and then in production, and the world was a very different looking place. It was not a Trump world. And then midway through the first season, the reality changed. And I think each and every day we're reminded of what we carry forward, a responsibility to Margaret Atwood's vision, and also to be part of the resistance. Now, with all respect to the guy, like I said, I think he's a real, the minute I met him, I realized he was a class act and a really good producer and all this. There's no correlation between The Handmaid's Tale and the world of Donald Trump. No, women are not being oppressed. Donald Trump hasn't done anything to women. Women are the same old American women they always were. If anything, if anything, there's been a kind of a lot of attention paid to sexual harassment in various business locations, and that'll die down and go away, believe me, and vanish, and it'll go back to men abusing women as they have since the dawn of time. That is what men and women do to one another. They abuse each other in different ways. But all I'm saying is, like, I can't sue, of course, I would never do this anyway, because I just don't think it's right. But I can't sue and say Hollywood as an entity keeps me from telling a story that uh, disagrees with this mainstream narrative, this narrative that somehow um, these people's artistic lives are wrapped up in attacking everything I believe in, which is not Donald Trump, but conservatism, uh, anti-feminism, a world in which people respect different diversified points of view in which uh, you can be a gay guy, but at the same time you can say, you know what, as a, as a cake maker, I don't want to cater your wedding. Those are things that I believe in and believe in everybody being free. And I can't sue people for that. And, it, and this is one of the reasons I keep telling conservatives that you have to build entities that do this stuff because there is no way to beat them. Believe me, every, every conservative I know, what they secretly want is they secretly want good reviews in the New York Times. They secretly want, you know, Steven Spielberg to make their movie. They want Fox to produce it and all that. It's not going to happen. It's never going to happen. And if it starts to happen, they're going to make sure that their voice actually overrides your voice in everything you say. So we need these new venues and new, you know, techniques and these kind of revolutionary ways of putting forward stories like this podcast that don't depend on them because that is what we're up against. And it's there's no, it's not like Google. There's no suing them because there are a million different employees and they have the right to express their opinion. It's just that we can't express our opinions if we don't have venues as well. And people have to really start uh, doing this because what they're defending is a narrative. What they're creating is a narrative. 